100 Best Poems for Boys and Girls from 1930. This is part three. Where go the boats? Dark brown is the river, golden is the sand. It flows along forever with trees on either hand. Green leaves of floating, castles of the foam, boats of mine aboating. Where will all come home? On goes the river and out past the mill, away down the valley, away down the hill. Away down the valley, a hundred miles or more, other little children shall bring my boots, boats ashore. The little rose tree. Every rose on the little tree is making a different face at me. Some look surprised when I pass by and others drop, but they are shy. These two whose heads together press tell secrets I could never guess. Some have their heads thrown back to sing and all the buds are listening. I wonder if the gardener knows or if he tells each just a rose. Seashell, 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 sing me a song, oh please. A song of ships and sailor men and parrots and tropical trees. Of islands lost in the Spanish main, which no man ever may find again. Of fish and corals under the waves and seahorses stabled in great green caves. Seashell, seashell, sing of the things you know so well. The Secret Cavern. Underneath the boardwalk, way, way back, there's a splendid caravan, big and black. Cavern, big and black. If you want to get there, you must crawl underneath the posts and steps and all. When I finished paddling, there I go. None of all the other children know. There I keep my treasures in a box, shells and colored glass and queer shaped rocks in a secret hiding place I've made, hollowed out from the clamshells and a spade marked with yellow pebbles in a row. None of all the other children know. It's a place that makes a splendid lair, room for chests and weapons in one chair. In the furthest corner by the stones, I shall have a flag with skulls and bones and a lap that casts lurid glow. None of all the other children know. Sometime by and by, when I'm grown, I shall go and live there all alone. I shall dig and paddle till it's dark, then go out and man my pirate bark. I shall fill my cave with captive foe. None of all the children know. The Family Dragon. Last night there walked across our lawn a beast we didn't know. We saw his little footprints marked quite plainly in the snow. It might have been an ocelot or perhaps a grizzly bear. We hoped it was a dragon come out walking from its lair. We didn't want a grown up one all fire and scales and foam, but just a baby dragonlet that we could carry home. We keep him in the nursery and give him a nice name and have him for a family pet with ribbons and quite tame. We tracked him down the meadow path and all along the hedge and there his little footprint stopped close up beneath the hedge. For there the snow had gone away, there wasn't any track and it was tea time anyway, so both of us went back. But we shall go someday quite soon and find him in his lair and capture him while he's asleep and tie him up with care. And we will have the Spressman come and put him in his wagon and bring him home and stay with us to be our family dragon. A fairy went to marketing. A fairy went to marketing. She bought a little fish. She put it in a crystal bowl upon a golden dish. An hour she sat in wonderment and watched its silver gleam. And then she gently took it up and slipped it in a stream. The fairy went to marketing. She brought a colored bird. It sang the sweetest, shrillest song that ever she had heard. She sat beside its painted cage and listened half the day. And then she opened wide the door and let it fly again. A fairy went a marketing. She bought a winter gown, all stitched about with gossamer and lined with thistle, thistle down. She wore it all the afternoon when prancing with delight, then gave it to a little frog to keep him warm that night. A fairy went to marketing. She bought a gentle mouse to take her tiny messages to keep her tiny house. All day she kept its busy feet, pit pattering to and fro, and then she kissed its silken ears, thanked it, and let it go. The end.